you hear me right dear pastor i see people cry and this is very interesting listen to this he says dear pastor i see people cry fast and pray to god to grant their request but unfortunately i don't see any visible answer for a long time why does this happen <laughs> I, I, I would like to it's very simple sir it's very very simple the the answer is very clear from the word of God first of all in first John chapter 5 and verse 14 he said this is the confidence that we have that if we ask anything according to his will hmm. he heareth us so um, we you, you don't know they cry and then you they ask but you, you have not found out how they are asking and um, if, if they don't ask according to the will of God, God it. will not hear. Yeah. Then in, in James chapter 1, verse, verse, um, from verse 6 down, it says, you ask and you receive not because you ask amiss. So if you see people cry and they ask and you don't see them receiving anything, for the fact that they cried and asked and they didn't receive, doesn't mean that um, you know, um, the word of God is ineffective or that God is punishing them. It is if they're acting in faith. But I, I, this reminds me of a, of a beautiful testimony, and you shared it even recently, of a woman who testified and said she was sick for many years, and that every night she used to cry, thinking God would hear her, listening to her, um, uh, her cry, her tear, watching her tears, until she listened to a message where Pastor Chris said that God does not respond to your tears, he responds mm -hmm. to your faith. Because the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. So... If these people are not exercising faith, they will not receive answers. It's just as simple as that. And this is what you have to, you have to know. It is not their tears. It's not the emotions. It's not their asking. But if, it is if they're asking according well, to the Well, they are not they're asking right. You know, that's James chapter 4 from verse 1. He says, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? You lost and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not, because he ask not. You ask and receive not, because he ask amiss, that he may consume it upon your loss. You ask and receive not, because you ask wrongly. And, and that's why the teaching of the word of God is so important. See, I keep emphasizing Christians that don't go to church don't grow spiritually. I keep emphasizing this because it's so important. Every Christian should go to church. Now, I know that not every person who goes to church is necessarily a Christian. Or at least he stands a good chance of getting to, to receive the word of God to change his life. But every Christian should go to church. Make sure you go to church. Make sure you participate in church. Be a vital member of a church. All right? Because there you will learn. You will learn not only from the pulpit where the preacher, the pastor is teaching you. You will learn from other leaders, people who were like you and they've now been taught and brought up and strengthened and, and maturing in the Lord. And they can, they can teach you. You also learn from others who are like you from the things that they are discovering. Now, you know, today we talk about social networks and so on and so forth. The best social network you can have is in the house of God. And that's life. See, where you can mix with other believers and they know the word of God. They are changed by God's word and they share that word with you. This is what you need. This is what you need. So, yeah. Sorry, sir. I, a thought came to me about the crowd he's running with. Yeah. If he does not see people receive answers to their prayers, that yeah. means it, that's a problem. What crowd that he, he's in. In fact, he says, I, I see people cry fast and pray to God to grant their request, but unfortunately, I don't see any visible answer for a long time. Yes. Uh, well, firstly, you may be looking at the wrong place. Secondly, you're, you may be looking at the wrong thing because. Um, God's answer primarily is God's spirit and when God answers you through the spirit he gives you the ability to produce for yourself the miracle that you're asking for a lot of times that's the way God answers and the, the other one who's ignorant is looking at you and expecting to see something physical for example if you pray 
that, oh God, I want a house. He may not drop a house in your hands, but he'll create an opportunity for you. He'll give you wisdom, understanding. And the guy who heard you pray for a house may not see you get a house in the next one month or two weeks. And then he thinks God didn't answer you because he's looking at the wrong thing. See, but God gives you wisdom. God gives you guidance. God gives you his word. See, what God wants to do in your life is not to give you money, give you physical things. It's not to give you the things of life that you may be asking for because he's already done that in Christ Jesus. So what he wants to do for you is to give you his word. With his words, you can create anything. Understand this. We are not paupers. We are not, God didn't put us here to be asking and calling on him for everything that we want. Oh God, give me this and give me that and give me that. That's not what God wants. We are children of God. We are heirs of the Father, joint heirs with Christ. All things already belong to us. Now, how do we get ourselves into the situation or the state where we can actually enjoy these things that belong to us in Christ? Number one is through knowledge. Through knowledge. Let me read to you from, first, uh, from 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 1. And I want you to follow this carefully. It says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. In verse 2, he says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Through the knowledge of God, grace and peace can be multiplied in your life. You know, it reminds me of the lady, uh, uh, Elaine, uh, Elaine, who said earlier that... Um, uh, her life was complicated and with so many problems. Well, what you need is more grace and more peace in your life. But the way to get that is through the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ our Lord. How do you get that knowledge? Through the study of the Word. Through hearing the Word like you're hearing now. Listening to the words, Participating in the house of God and being taught. Because there, not only are you taught from the pulpit, you are taught by example. That's important. Alright? So... Um, in verse 3, he says, According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. See that? He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through knowledge. So, the more you know God through his word, the more you learn how to operate in kingdom principles and bring his glory into your life. Because you're supposed to be the expression of the glory of God. So if your life is not expressing that glory, it means that you're not living with more and more knowledge in your life. Look at it. He says, according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and excellence. Praise God. Amen. All right.